Fantastic. Thank you so much to our speakers and chair of that important session. We are now going to turn over and ask some questions. As always, there are many. Uh, we will get through as many as we can. Okay, we're going to start with uh, Dr. Simmons. Um, why is taping recommended when tape is so often not tolerated by EDS patients' skin? Oh, so thanks, thanks for that question and whoever asked that question. Um, I think the thing is, it's, not everybody uh, has very sensitive skin. Uh, so for some people, the tape will be okay. So obviously those who've got very fragile skin, uh, that can be an issue. But the thing about tape is, um, it can really help to improve the kind of feedback and the proprioception, and it can provide some stability. And for physiotherapists, sometimes it can help to guide our treatments as well. If people do well with tape, sometimes they might also do well with a brace or it helps us to make our diagnosis. So we're, also, we're always careful where we apply the tape and for how long, and there are different tapes which are more sensitive. Fantastic, thank you. And Dr. Raggio, how prevalent is knee replacement among EDSs and how successful is the procedure? So um, the question about a total knee replacement is for everyone who's listening who doesn't know what we're talking about perhaps is that's where you, you replace both ends of the joint and you replace the undersurface of the patella and that's generally done for arthritis so that's not done for instability that's not done generally uh, just for a patella problem. And so I don't have an actual number to tell you how common is total joint replacement. We do have patients that have had it done. And I think, again, it goes back to so much is not a statistic, but why would you have the surgery done? If you are having arthritis in your knee, then I think, and it's coming to the point where you can't bend your knee, you can't walk correctly, I think that's important. If you have Ehlers Stanlos and you need a total knee replacement, your doctor then needs to be aware of what we call ligament balancing. So when you put in a total joint replacement, the importance is to have strong muscles and strong ligaments that holds that in place. And so the concern to me isn't so much do you, one is do you need the total knee replacement because of arthritis, and number two is the doctor needs to be where they're going to need to balance and maybe do things a little bit differently than they would in the average person. And that's where things like really prehab ahead of time and perhaps afterwards you might still need a brace to stabilize that knee because a total joint replacement is not going to stabilize an otherwise unstable knee. That's really important to remember. Thank you, very helpful. Okay, and Dr. Russick, um, is cracking your joints, like when people crack their knuckles or their back, damaging tissues and joints? Um, I don't think we actually have research that confirms an answer to that question, um, but it probably is not a good thing in general. Um, Dr. Simmons, what would you say to that? I'd say it's not a good thing in general. If you could do something else, have a little stretch, <laughs> um, it's not really a great idea. Thank you both. But especially to the end of, uh, end of range, um, so if you can avoid it. Thank you. And while we're with you, Dr. Simmons, do you have any suggestions for good or effective compression braces or clothing? So it's interesting, isn't it? Over the years, we've talked about uh, the use of compressive cl clothing, whether it was a pair of tighter jeans, I wear a pair of tighter underwear, some <laughs> tighter stockings is where we started with this. But actually, um, you can, as we heard in one of the talks earlier, you can get flight stockings, uh, you can get uh, Under Armour uh, gear now to give you some compression, and there are other now orthotics. So some of the companies are producing um, materials and uh, bespoke uh, costumes, if you like, for people. So I think there's a range, but do you know, wearing a tighter pair of jeans can sometimes be really helpful. Thank you. And Dr. Raggio, what kind of sports do you recommend people do with EDS um, that's, or an NHSD that's not gonna harm the joints? So uh, I generally recommend things that people, that they need to find something they like to do. So first of all, I, I don't 
uh, say, gee, I think everyone should play chess because that's a safe sport, if you think chess is. So I think sports are going to be individual. Um, things, you know, we like swimming in some ways because it builds muscles, but we don't like swimming if you are going to overstretch. So I think the key is whatever sport you think you want to play, I think you need to have the discussion with your doctor and your physiotherapist about what is, what's a safe way to do it. Get in shape to play sports. Don't play sports to get in shape. That's number one. Number two, talk to your physical therapist and your orthopedist so that you know what muscles need to be as strong as possible. And three, see what they say about the activity itself. Like I mentioned overhead tennis. So a tennis and an overhead serve. So if you don't want that hyperextension through that shoulder, you might serve just straight away. Uh, and you can modify it. So I prefer to work with what the patient says to me. These are the three things I would like to do. Are any of them safe? And how can I make them safe for me? Um, Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, Dr. Rossick, uh, on the same topic as braces, is it possible to wear braces or tape too often that it starts weakening those muscles? And how do you find that balance? So the taping doesn't actually hold the joint in place. Um, it provides proprioceptive feedback, mostly through the compression on the skin. Um, braces, though, can hold joints in place, which can be helpful if the joint is acute. But if they are used too much or inappropriately, sometimes they can lead to the stabilizing muscles not doing their job properly. So I often recommend to my patients um, and it does depend a little bit on which body part it is, but in general, to try not to use the brace when you don't need it. But if you have a flare um, or you're going to do something that's more demanding, you're going out into the community and doing something that's more challenging to you, those times you would wear the brace. Um, there are some joints that, have, that you can't really strengthen them enough to stabilize them. So fingers, for example, and sometimes the arches of the feet. Um, and so in cases like that, arch supports or finger braces um, really can be very beneficial. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and Dr. Simmons, is it possible to have one part of the body more flexible than another? For example, the right side is more rigid and the left side more mobile. Yes, indeed. In fact, um, some of the early research has shown that actually in general, um, we've seen more laxity on the left side of the body, which is interesting. And whether that's been because of increased use or lack of use, um, and it's a phenomenon that we've observed. But we have to realise that if you use a joint repeatedly through range, you can increase the range in that joint. So you'll find tennis players will have increased range of movement in their shoulders, for example, they develop uh, and they can increase their range and you'll find on the other side it's not so. So some things are inherent uh, and some things are because you've uh, developed laxity. So it's about the combination of what the underlying joints are, how you've used your body uh, that, that creates this uh, mobility. Thank you. And Dr. Raggio, what are your thoughts on prolotherapy? Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm prolotherapy? Yes. I have to say, I don't know what prolotherapy is and I apologize. If I saw Dr. Simmons nodding. So Dr. Simmons, could you give us some uh, feedback, please? Yeah, can I just yeah, pick up on this? So this is um, a, a, an approach, an, a, a therapy where there's actually an injection um, of a stimulant, if you like, a, a stimulant into the connective tissue, which can start to increase the fibrosis. And there has been, interestingly, I can see some faces. Um, but, uh, no, interestingly, there has been some early research that's been done uh, in New Zealand and actually a case series which was published recently, particularly uh, around some of the, um, a number of different uh, regions. So I think initially we raised our eyebrows because we thought, where would we inject this if, if, if we've got generalized uh, problems? Uh, but they've used it very specifically on specific problems and actually it has been helpful. So it now needs obviously much deeper research. Um, 
but I think it's something that maybe, like a lot of things, could have some potential in some specific instances. Uh, but we can get that research out to you. I know Alan's uh, aware of that research as well. Fantastic. Okay. And just uh, to all of you, very, very succinct, quick answers, because we've got about a minute, but I'd love to hear one recommendation from all of you. In a COVID-19 era where people aren't able to get out to their therapies, are there any life hacks or tips that you recommend uh, to help people with dislocations and keeping strong and mobile? So um, Dr. Simmons, we'll start with you. Okay. So uh, during this lockdown, um, do you know, I think people have really benefited from doing a little bit of gentle Tai Chi. Um, this is a mind-body uh, awareness type of program and really good for developing um, some strength and control. So a little bit of gentle Tai Chi. Thank you. And Dr. Rusick. I also like Tai Chi. Um, there are also some Pilates programs designed for people who are hypermobile that can be done at home, but definitely try to stay active because otherwise your joints will fall apart. And Dr. Raggio? Uh, number one, work on your core. So always sit with your belly button, put, pull through to your back. <laughs> and core, core, core. And number two, continue that home exercise program you're supposed to be doing anyway. If you haven't got one, get if, one. If you have one. <laughs> if you have one. If that would be the ideal for everyone, let's hope one day that everyone has access to that, what they most definitely need and deserve. Thank you, all three of you. Really important subject. Um, Learned a lot. Thank you so much. We're now going on a break. Get ready to have that wriggle, to get moving, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you.